Time for some political nuts. This time we have this interesting case. These people usually present themselves as all inclusive and all that crap. And as soon as someone disagrees with them, now you are a bigot. Let's watch. Um, before I uh, ask my questions, um, since it has not yet been done, I, I, I think it's important to really make sure that the jingoistic bigoted testimony of Mr. Homan is called out as nearly completely untrue as being an outrage, and as a former official directing the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, he should know better. Uh, so, M Mr. making Chairman, sure that I am... Mr. Chairman. No, no, this is my five minutes. Well, the word, the word what what, what I, did I, I say was inaccurate? I, I, excuse uh, okay, me. I'm not asking the question. Okay, the, the general lady is recognized for five minutes. She's made her point, and I will try to resolve any other issues at the end of her questioning. Okay. Thank you. So, I just think it's important that it's not accepted as accurate testimony. Mr. Holman, is there a crisis on the border? Of course. And has there been a crisis there for a long time? Yes. I just want to get, because your, your testimony was at the broader issue, and I, I'm, we, we, this is critically important, but we also have a broader issue there. We've got unbelievable numbers we've seen on the border with apprehensions and everything else, right? Absolutely. If I can respond to the earlier remark from uh, Washington Schultz, I forgot more about this issue than you ever know. So if you say my testimony is inaccurate, is wrong. Everything I said here is accurate. Bottom line. If you want to go toe to toe, I'm here. I'm here in my own time to speak to the American people about what's false I'm sure and what's I'm happy fact. to go toe to toe with you, Mr. Homan. Well, I'm, happy I'm to here. Do that any day. But you got to let me respond to your question rather than I dropping a bomb and running away. It was my time. So and there I is a crisis on the border, and, and it's not going to go away if we keep enticing more and more. If we want to abolish ICE, we want to give away college education and driver's licenses and free medical care and reward illegal behavior, you're never going to solve the immigration crisis on the border. It's not going to happen. Probably doesn't help them when certain members of Congress criticize the agents down there trying to do their job. Probably doesn't help when you have pictures put on websites that talk about cages when, in fact, the picture was from the Obama administration. Probably doesn't help when you say the crisis is faked, contrived, and manufactured and hold off spending the $4.6 billion we needed to actually deal with a crisis that got much worse. Probably doesn't help with all those, all those factors either, does it? No, sir. Probably doesn't help that you got cities declaring themselves sanctuaries. That probably doesn't help with the situation either. And it doesn't help to have a missed message that all of a sudden deferred action is going away, that all of a sudden prosecutor discretion is going away for this policy change. I myself have approved many requests for stays of removal for medical issues. ICE doesn't put their heart on a shelf when they wear the badge and gun and all of a sudden they don't care about humanity. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous false narrative, and I'm going to be here to the day I die to defend the men and women of the Border Patrol and ICE who put it online every okay. day for this country. Um, a, a quick question that I want to try to, or, or statement, and then some clarification. It, it is my observation that um, when DHS rolled this policy change, for lack of a better term, until I get to the second panel to ask, uh, USCIS, when they rolled it out, it is my view that it was uh, not rolled out the way it should be rolled out, right? It should have been rolled out a different way. Uh, and we'll see what that looks like in the next panel. If one thought that ICE was the best place to deal with deferred um, action, uh, it would seem to me that the debate then is whether, you know, the question here is where it should be. Should it be USCIS or should it be at ICE? And that we, if we were going, to, if you were going to accept that premise, then what should have been done was much clearer notice given and much a different kind of transition. Like let's just assume, for a minute, ICE is the best place for it. Then a letter should have gone out or a phone call or you know reach out and say, hey, no issue. You're going to keep getting health treatment. We're changing processes. This is the way ICE is now going to handle it, and so forth and so forth. So I think I'd, I'd like to just stipulate. That that's my view. That that's that if you're transitioning the way you previously handled something, then you need to have something like that. Uh, we'll ask the second panel about that. Having said that, uh, I do. I am interested in continuing to learn where it should exist. We'll hear from USCIS in a minute, but I want to understand, Mr. Homan, on the, that question. We'll come to this other stuff in a minute. With respect to ICE and why you think it's the best place, can you speak to the question at hand here about I think the fear of somebody's here. They're in a tough situation, and you're saying, okay, we're getting shoved into a pipeline for expedited removal, and then hoping there might be a question of discretion. Well, and can you, can you kind of walk through how that might work in ICE? Well, let's be clear in my testimony. What I've yep. said is, 
As a law enforcement officer, prosecutorial discretion needs to be in the hands of those who have statutory authority over those laws. It is a case-by-case -case determination. Right. Once you carve out a whole class of people you want prosecutorial discretion, it's no longer prosecutorial discretion based right. on case-by-case. -case. Now, we have talked about states. That's what ICE currently do. They give stage removal. Mr. Marino, what he says, I'm not disagreeing with him. Is ICE prepared to make other decisions that CIS is making? That's a question for ICE in the next panel. Right. What I've talked about is ICE needs to have the authority of prosecutorial discretion, and that's a legal issue. And, and, and I think those decisions, no other agencies to say, well, ICE can't remove that person. That needs to be ICE prosecutorial discretion, or you shouldn't put in proceedings. That needs to be ICE's decision. Now, the, are they prepared to do that because they normally don't? You have to ask the next panel that. So I, I'm not lying on my testimony. I'm speaking to my 30 years of doing this and what I think prosecutorial discretion means. So, uh, what, and, and the reason I think this matters, right, is the purpose of, uh, I, I hope there's general agreement about the process and the communication and what should have occurred there, that we can have a debate, as I think we had a good conversation, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez and Mr. Meadows, about, okay, where do we go forward on this, on that question? We'll ask the next panel some of these, but it, but it is important for us not to send some signal of, you know, uh, panic, to use Mr. Meadows' term, that, that anything is going, going to be problematic going forward that will address the issue and try to reconcile whatever gaps there are here. Um, I do think it's also important to note on this question of deferred action, the question of uh, when it is a discretion for a prosecutor, right? This is at the court of DACA and DAPA, right? We had this litigation in DAPA. Uh, we went to the court and the court agreed that that was something more than discretion. That was something beyond discretion. And I think what we see here in a sort of separation here is that what we're talking about here is discretion. I think, uh, Ms. Wadi, I was looking at your testimony, uh, the data points there, he said, one data I was able to identify included 118 deferred actions of which 107 were approved pending or unknown in a particular data set that you had, indicating that each one is case by case and there were eight that didn't qualify. I have no idea what those eight were, but you know that's a decision by you know case by case decision. Um, to that end, let me ask you one question. Final, in my last five minutes, Mr. Homan, uh, would you like to address uh, and would you please address any of the? Yeah, I want to address the last you? comments made about me being appalling. And, and, and first of all, I served my country for 34 years. I saved many lives, and I ran an agency. Let's be frank in what ICE does. I ICE. Last year, took a, a season of op opioids off the streets of this country that could have killed every man, woman, and child in the United States twice. They've arrested thousands of sexual predators that, that pre uh, preyed on children. They rescued thousands of children who were, who were victims of, of predators. They arrested hundreds of women who were victims of sex trafficking. I am proud of the agency in ICE. And what we don't want to talk about is nearly 90% of everybody ICE arrests for immigration violations either have a criminal history or are pending criminal charges when they were found. I mean, they were found in a county jail, which most likely means they weren't a choir boy. So to, to mismeasures, what the, the work the men and women of ICE do is I find appalling that a member of Congress would, would withdraw that out there like that. I, it, it, in my 34 Mr. years, I've never seen such expired. hate toward a law enforcement agency in my life that you want to abolish Mr. them Holman, the rather than doing your job and Mr. legislate. Holman, your if time they don't is like expired. it, legislate. You can't. If, I, Mr. I Holman, Congress according to the rules of this committee, of enacting laws. Mr. Holman, your time is expired. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If parents. I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father Holman, from his Mr. Holman, with family. all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, earlier, my colleague from Maryland, Mr. Raskin, asked the panel how many people here believe that child separation is an effective policy in deterrence and no one on the panel raised their hand. I just wanted to note that for the record, Mr. Chair. I, I wanted to ask a question from Professor um, Mukherjee. Is the United States violating or violated human rights agreements set by the United Nations in a family separation policy? Yes. 
International law is clear that family unity should be prioritized. So we, as members of the United Nations, signed on into an international human rights agreement saying very clearly that family separation is a violation of international human rights, and then we pursued a policy that violates human rights. Um, you know, Mr. Chair, I was looking, how did we get to this point? How did we get to this point where we take children out of mothers' and fathers' arms? And, uh, you know, it, it dated back family separation in the way that we have seen it, where we take children away from their parents without due process, began last year under Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. But I had to dig further, and our staff dug further. But where did this start within the administration? She implemented it, and we found a memo dates back to April 23rd of 2018, where there was an official recommendation to, quote, pursue prosecution of all amenable adults who cross our border, quote, illegally, even though this applied to legal asylum see seekers in practice, including those presenting with a family unit between ports of entry in coordination with DOJ. Here is the memo that I would like to submit to the congressional record. What is the name of that? It is the memo, memorandum for the secretary um, from Homeland Security. Date. April 23rd, 2018, subject increasing prosecutions of immigration violations. Without objection. And so I looked at this memo and it seems like this is the source of it. And it seems as though Mr. Homan, that you are the author. It says here from yourself, Kevin Michalinen, and Francis Cisna. Is this correct? Did you sign the memo? I'd have to see what you, you give me. I'd be happy to provide it. Um, and we'll provide it over. But I would like to note that here it says the official recommendation there were three different options presented. The third included the option for family separation. This initiative would pursue prosecution of all amenable adults, including those presenting with a family unit. Mr. Homan, your name is on this, is this correct? Yes, I signed that memo. So you are the author of the family separation policy? I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo? Yes, a, so, zero, a zero tolerance memo. So you provided the official recommendation to Secretary Nielsen on family, for the United States to pursue family separation. I gave Secretary Nielsen numerous recommendations on how to secure the border and save lives. But it says here that you, re you gave her numerous options, but the recommendation was option three, family but, separation. What I'm saying, this is not the only paper where we've given the Secretary numerous options to secure the border and save lives. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. The same as is with every U.S. citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If parents. I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separate that Mr. Father from Holman, his with all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll know when I make more videos like this. Peace.